Hi, so today we've come up to my old hometown in Whangarei and um, we're going to go and have a look at a gold mine. It, it didn't really go very far. <laughs> Whangarei is not really known for its gold mining, but it uh, gave people something to do um, in the early days there. And then we would go and have a look at a cave, possibly. Um, yeah, there's not really much to do with mining up in Northland, but um, we'll see what we can find. I'm up here with my brother, and we, we haven't been here for a long time. My brother lives in Australia, so um, I haven't seen him for about six years. Uh, it's just something interesting to do while we're both in the same town. Okay, all right, we'll head off to the cave now, and uh, we'll catch up there. Right, so we're here up Parahaki in Whangarei and uh, just coming to the old mine entrance here. Now, when I was a kid, I've been coming in here since I was probably eight years old and it seemed much taller when I was a kid, but obviously I was much shorter as well. And there didn't used to be a tree down at the entrance here either. But we'll go in here and see what we've got. This mine was dug in 1909. Now, as far as I'm aware, they never really, it was never a profitable venture. Probably mainly taking up someone's time who was needing more employment or something like that. Now, just in here, we've got Quite a little wetters up on the roof here. Hopefully the camera's going to pick them out. I did try to pick up some a few minutes ago, but they really don't want to go on you. Yeah. I'd rather jump away than climb on your hand. Yeah. Down here in the past, this particular off to the right here, I came in here once and there were plastic buckets all down the end. So someone had been having a go at it. You know, seeing what, what, what they can get out of here. And I reckon, perhaps the camera can pick up the slight, at the end of the tunnel here, it's a bit darker. And I think that's what they've dug away, where this stream is coming out. I find it hard to believe that it was worthwhile doing, but I suppose good on them for seeing what's there, seeing what's in this country. If I look up here, there's a little pocket that I can see some quartz in, so I reckon that's what they've gone into there. It's um, probably not the most encouraging sort of sign, but you know, interesting if you've got some way of processing it. It's illegal, you're not allowed to do it. Prospecting mining anywhere in the North Island. I mean, unless you're a big mining company that can get past all the regulations, it's not going to happen. And even if you are a big mining company, uh, getting past environmental issues groups is another thing that is very difficult in this country. <laughs> For good reason. Um, miners left a hell of a mess in the past. But um, the economic value for the country would have been worthwhile. New Zealand would have uh, not established itself as well as it did without the early gold mines. So again, the wood on the floor that I'm going past here, people, modern people have done that. I believe they would have come down here and I can see at the end here, there's a, a darker patch where they've been... I don't know how they would have got it out. I don't think... It must have been dynamite, because I can't see pick marks on the wall anywhere. And right down the end here, got some good size wetters on the wall. Yeah. They just don't want to go on me at all. But, um, yeah, I'm not freaked out by them anymore. It's grasshoppers. And someone's been digging away in the pocket down here. Wow, well, they got quite keen. It's quite deep and deep inside there. Um, 
Yeah, but I don't really see what they were looking for. No obvious vein of quartz in this particular section of the mine. So we'll turn around here and go back down and see what's further along. Bit of graffiti in here. I mean, this is very easily accessible from town. Even just walking. Looks like they've dug in here as well. Again, there's perhaps a bit of brecciated quartz. Nothing very spectacular. Um, water's not too bad on the ground. So it must drain out of here relatively easily. And the mud is not really deep like it is out at Thames and Coromandel. Uh, Wairoma Maya. And we're coming down here towards the end of the mine. And it does curve around here to the left slightly. I don't know how it goes a lot further. Now, when I was very young there were some old shoes out here I'm not sure where they were from. Always to me they seemed like they were maybe from the depression era 1930s so there were some old shoes and some old pants I don't know whether they're from a miner or someone who was just using this mine as a storage area for some of their goods while they went into town. But that's what you have of the, uh, the old mine up at Parahaki in Whangarei. Very low ceilings. There must have been perhaps dwarves. Maybe one of the seven dwarves came down here and mined because it's, it's less than five feet tall. I really dug away at some of these areas. There must have been a vein of quartz, quite thin I would say, that they've been going in and trying to get and dug pretty much everything out that they could, which was not very much unfortunately for them. But good for us, we've had a nice look through here. Uh, I think the other thing that I've got to do while I'm in the Whangarei area there's some caves that we'll go and look at. Also, things that are caves that I've been in since I was a kid. So we'll go and see what we can find of that now. Right, so we've come out here to this cave up in Whangarei that I want to have a look at. Now, technically this cave is shut, so I'm not going to actually say where I am. But, um, unfortunately, a young man was killed here a few months ago. And the uh, local Māori put a rahui on this area until the end of August. Now a rahui means that um, they have restricted access uh, as a sign of respect. And um, so anyway, that has finished and they still are yet to open the track. Now the problem with tracks when they get shut is that there are probably staffing issues at DOC or the council or whoever it is and um, they don't have the time, money to uh, come and uh, check these places out and see that everything's okay and uh, of course a, a mine or a cave is never going to be uh, looked at as safe by anybody so um, you know it's easier to keep things shut than open them again which is quite annoying um, but we're going to make our way in here as best we can. It's a bit tricky down through these rocks. Now, when I was a kid, all these rocks were up on the ceiling, and um, there has been a lot of collapse since then around the entrance. I'm hoping that I can still find my way down here through all these boulders. It's um, quite tricky with all my torches and phone. And I'm just trying to see my way down through here. 
and we're nearly down at the stream. Yeah, unfortunately there is some signs of what's been going on here, but let's not focus on those. Here we are. So we've got a stream running through the bottom of the cave here. And sometimes the stream is very high and in places it's likely to be waist high or more and the water depth we'll get through here and see see how it is at the moment there hasn't been there's been some rain recently but not not a huge amount um, so hopefully the water is a bit down compared to what it can be we see some stalactite features coming down now sadly there has been a lot of people come through here and there's some damage to some of the stalactites from people touching them and so on but again it's better than the cave being shut down through the water here. It's interesting, you can see the where the water has flowed down over the years and carved out through the limestone, these striations through the rock. Now, I also remember when I was a kid there were a lot of glowworms in here somewhere. Um, I haven't seen them for a long time. Now, bearing in mind when I say when I was a kid I was in here, uh, most of my adult life I lived in Australia. Um, so I have my memories of being a child and growing up around this area. But then there is a big gap of 20 or so years where I was in Western Australia. So sometimes I think I'm a local and sometimes I don't. memories as a child are a lot different from things I might have done had I been older and living here. Um, it's finding it a little bit tricky to get past this rock here. I might have to hold my phone like that, which is a bit dumb. Just let me get down here and I'll get a better purchase on the rocks and things where I can stand. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? My foot's jammed. All right, back in. Okay, so through the stream here. At the moment the water is maybe, maybe a foot deep, something like that. So I'll just climb through here and over some more boulders. There's much different patterns on the inside than the, there is in a gold mine. A lot cleaner. Not so much oxidation in the rocks. Well, that's probably because it's all limestone and um, Limestone doesn't rust like the sulfides do in the um, gold areas. Oh, that's just full of water. Very deep water. Um, yeah, there's no way around that. And to be honest, I can't be bothered.